All right, TJ, that Let's was go, cool. I, I always love to be able to talk about companies that I fully appreciate and yeah. respect. And I can't say enough about Roofer. They've been awesome to me since day one. Like I said, yeah. I have that same shirt you've got on. And this, uh, this that's, that's a no vintage shirt at this point. I, I uh, and Richie likes this shirt a lot when I wear it. Um, but this shirt's no, we no longer have this shirt. So like every time I wash it, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be the last time I get to wear it. <laughs> so I'm gonna take mine out of the gym rotation right now. I just yeah, right. took it for granted and felt like maybe someday I could get another one, but no, that's yeah. yeah. I, I that shirt's coming at, out. Uh, I was looking back at pictures last night from uh from 2018 2019. I would have had a little bit more hair and I was wearing a roofer uh, sweatshirt and I was like, where is that roofer hoodie? I don't even know where that's at. Uh, but, uh, but definitely the best swag in the industry comes from roofer for sure. So <laughs> no doubt about that. I absolutely yeah. love it. So we got, we got look, iron on patches coming. Iron so, on patches. You're kidding yeah. me. Yeah, look. no, I, uh, that's what the, my next swag is going to be the, uh, the roofer iron on, uh, iron on patch. Put one right here. Yep. Put it right on the corner. Make me see. official. I'm, I'm an official <laughs> roofer. So I love yeah, it. TJ, sure. this is going to be a lot of fun. I appreciate yep. you taking the time out. You are, in fact, the world's greatest roofer. <laughs> and I am going to change the spelling on the title because I don't have yep. it uh, updated to your current title. That's but okay. um, thank you for taking the time. Yeah. So yeah. we just discussed a lot about roofer. That was a lot yeah. of the, the topic that I was going to talk to you about. But I've got some yeah. other stuff here. Yeah. So. I wanted to just kind of touch base with you because you and I actually just met in person at RoofCon a couple weeks ago. Sure. Um, I'm not kidding when I say that was the highlight of my day when you guys all knew who I was and everything. That's pretty cool. Um, but I've been following you for quite a while, and I think anybody in the industry has been because you're you're out there. You put yourself out there to the yeah. masses. Yeah. And I want to ask, you know, first off, I know that you have not always been in this roofing industry. You just said yourself yeah. about eight years ago. Yeah. Um, what brought you into this eight years ago? At that point, yeah. you were a grown man. You had common sense about yourself, but you still ended up in the roofing industry. So yeah. what was the what was the big draw that brought you into it? And, um, you know, how did you get your start in this deal? And a little bit about your background and then we'll work up to yeah. how you became the most viral individual that I know. Sure. Um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll speed through a couple of years. Uh, I did the military thing when I was in uh, in the 90s uh, as a as a teenager uh, into my 20s and then became a, a police officer um, working, uh, whether it be a federal institution uh, for prisoners or, or on the street as an actual police officer for many years of my life. Uh, fast forward uh, to uh, 2013, I, I was diagnosed with PTSD. Um, and, uh, I couldn't be a police officer, uh, at that time anymore. Right. At that time they were just saying, Oh, go get help. And, you know, uh, I, I was end up, uh, being offered a, a position to be a police officer in other places after that. Um, I just chose not to, um, my entire adulthood started as being a robot to society, um, which was uh, the way that we interacted with people, the way that we fought with people, the way that we arrested people, uh, the reasons that we did it, the, the motions uh, going behind it. So I never really knew what it was like to actually be a real person or have real friendships with people or even in my family because I was so uh, every day when I went to work, I saw so many bad things happening and I would live such a structured lifestyle that uh, that being a, an actual human being didn't exist in my own body. So when I stopped being a police officer, uh, there were several years or two, you know, two even into my first year of roofing where I didn't know what was going on with my life or, or where my life was going to go. Um, I was poor. Uh, I was working uh, at a gas station there uh, in the beginning of 2015. Uh, I was driving Uber a little bit. Um, and, uh, one day I, I happened to get a Craigslist ad on my phone. Um, and I, I looked at it and it says temporary position for five days. And, uh, and so I said, you know what, I, I need this job. It was paying like $20 an hour. Uh, so I, I, I answered the call. I went to a, a, uh, um, this temporary agency where they did a typing test with me. And, uh, the next, next step was, uh, they said, okay, we want you to go over to this, uh, this office over here on Inverness Parkway in Denver. And I get there and the very first person that I see in the, uh, when I walk through the door is Elsie Nussbeck. 
And um, I didn't know Elsie to save my life. I didn't know Reggie Brock to save my life. I didn't know uh, all of the major names from the roofing industry that were in that room that day. Uh, but uh, but I, they, they took me in under their wing and uh, I was uh, literally waiting for a job that I had start like I had been interviewed for just prior to this uh, this job. And uh, they said, it's going to be three to four weeks before we can let you start. And uh, if you know three to four weeks in a lot of people's lives is devastating when it comes to money. Uh, so uh, when I started this five day job, I said, okay, this will get me a little bit closer to starting my new job. And when I got to Friday, um, I said, all right, guys, thank you so much. You know, I got to start my new job um, and uh, I'll see you later. And, uh, and Reggie Brock and LC said, uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, the rest is history. Um, I, uh, from that point moving forward, um, I I did everything in the very first part of my career that you could think uh, that you could think of, from teaching roofers uh, to talking to homeowners to working together on pilot programs with insurance carriers, um, and uh, so I, I learned a whole lot in the first two years working for the OG of storm chasing, um, and uh, and I sat next to him every day for for several years. Man, that is an awesome story. And I was not <laughs> expecting that at all. Yeah. That is tremendous. And I will yeah. say this, a couple things on your story on a personal yeah. note. Yeah, I definitely can appreciate PTSD. Sure. Uh, my mother had PTSD. She passed away back yeah. in February, but she had it for the past 20 yeah. plus years. She was in an accident and it, it, there were children involved and it was just a whole thing. So I can appreciate that. And I know that that changes the entire world for you. And yeah. To me, it's just so amazing that I talked to so many different people. This industry just kind of shows up on accident for all of us, right? And the same thing with me. I was pissed off at my job one day and I'm driving yeah. home and I saw that there was a place that was hiring a driver for roofing supplies and yeah. here we are. Yeah. But it's amazing to me because I feel like it draws in the best people at the time when we need it the most. Right. And then it transforms us into who we're supposed to be and Man, I mean, 2015 wasn't that long ago, you know? It, it feels like a long time ago looking back at all the things that I've done since 2015, but really in the grand scheme of things, it's not been a long time. Man, my son is not, almost nine, so um, it, it's he was a baby then, but uh, for me, that's a long time. Yeah, it's amazing how much can happen, though. It, it yep. really truly is when you believe and when you just honestly just step out and, and take the initiative and make it happen, so... Yeah, that is awesome. Okay, so you're starting off, you know, coming from working at a gas station to now yeah. working at a humongous yeah. roofing company. Yeah, and you kind of find your way in there, and they notice your your abilities right off the bat, and say, "You're yeah. not going anywhere, my friend." Um, you start doing all this stuff, and then between some somewhere between then and now, yeah, you became the viral content creator that you are. Yeah. Um, was there a day, a specific moment, a roof, an episode yeah. that triggered that entire thing? Was there one particular yeah. incident that you caught on camera that said, that's what it is. And, well, you know, tell me a little bit about that because you are extremely viral now. And yeah. I've got an associate with our company, Leanne Koppel with K socialized media, and she's doing the same thing. Yeah. And I it's to cool to see people. <laughs> yeah. Right. Guys, it's cool. See you see you're doing on TikTok. Yeah, five, ten, yeah. whatever millions of views. And it's like, man, this is yeah. cool. And you know, what inspired that? And yeah. what kind of content, I guess, is is really the thing, you know, like it's gotta be something that, that catches attention, obviously, to get that kind of views. Let me, but let, let, let what, what was the idea little, behind it? Yeah, let, let's talk about the evolution of, of social media, right? What you had Lee Hate a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago on your show. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, you know, back in the old days, um, in 2015, 2016, Lee Haight was on uh, social media every day on a live broadcast. So was Reggie Brock. He would do his five minute power talk, uh, talking to roofers. And then, um, uh, you know, 2017, uh, Crest came out, right? Uh, Sam Struthers and Logan Graff. And uh, they were they were on top of roofs yelling crust hustle and and they were attracting so many people utilizing social media that their company grew very quickly because of their social media presence. 
Um, and, uh, you know, I went to work for Crest at some point in my career and, uh, it was, you know, it was, we, we took a lot of pictures. We didn't take a lot of videos back then, but we took a lot of pictures on roofs, which made us a lot of money because of, uh, because of the, you know, social media presence that we had. Um, but you know, 2020 COVID was going on and, um, here in Colorado, I, I live in a very liberal place. We'll call it that. Um, and uh, we were locked down a lot uh, during COVID, um, which they said that if you were in construction or if you were a roofer, that it was okay for you to go out and, and work. But truly, the people that you came in contact were with, what are you doing knocking on my door? Or, or what are you doing? You know, right in the middle of lockdown, I, I don't need my roof checked. So here I am, you know, losing money by the hour, uh, it felt like, and I didn't have any ability to reach anybody. Uh, so I said, I, I saw TikTok. Uh, Donald Trump had just um, had just approved uh, money for content creators on TikTok at the at the end of 2020 there. Um, and it became very like, like, whoa, you know, I can make money making videos. And, uh, and so I started and I, I treated it like a full-time job. And the reason that I treated it like a full-time job was because I didn't have anything else to do anyways. Um, so I, I had the time to throw at it. So the first four months was me messing around, making the worst content that I think that you could ever make for somebody. I, I know I've embarrassed myself at least a thousand times, which is cool with me because at the, it, it where I'm at today, all that bullshit that I went through is all worth it now. <laughs> uh, but uh, but no, uh, four months in, uh, I had a viral video, um, and it was just me doing what I normally do, which is kind of be a, a a nice, humble human being. And I went next door to my neighbor's house. I woke up that morning. Uh, I remember waking up, and typically when I wake up at like seven thirty or eight, it takes me an hour or two to get going. Uh, but uh, that morning, I went to the grocery store. I bought flowers for my neighbor and uh, I get home and I'm walking them uh, down the sidewalk and uh, I'm walking into her driveway and I said, huh, I, this would be a great opportunity for me to make a video real quick saying what I'm doing. And I turned that camera around and for 12 seconds, I told my camera what I was doing and I went viral within three hours. And uh, that that point moving forward i've had just over 30 viral videos and just over, uh, just under 200 million people have watched me on uh, a video or live broadcast man that's insane and it just <laughs> randomly again you know all this stuff just happens and it's funny how they say you know there's really no such thing as luck and you create it with the energy that you put out yeah. this is a great example yeah. i mean my gosh I'm over yeah. here trying, you know, I'm, I'm happy if I get like 150, 200 yeah. views, 200 million, man. That's, uh, that's, that's awesome. Like, right. Karina, Karina says to me, you know, Karina's my wife and Karina's like, to, you know, Karina's got almost 20,000 of her own followers herself. And, uh, and she always says to me, you know, I'll look at a video and it'll have like two or 3000 views. And I'll be like, man, that video didn't do very well. And she's like, well, think about all of the other people that just made a video similar that only got two or 300 views. And, uh, and I, I have to humble myself to remember those days when I was getting those numbers. Uh, but my most recent viral video is still breaking barriers that I never even thought possible. There's one video that I just made recently at RoofCon uh, that has 13.1 million views in the past three weeks since RoofCon and uh, almost a million likes. Uh, we sold 1,200 pairs of uh, Damon shorts. Uh, I was gonna say, it's gear. the sticky shorts, I know yeah. it. Yeah, Steve gear. And, uh, and those shorts, are, that's not the first time those shorts have done that. Uh, those shorts have done that uh, several other times. The first time was for Dimitri. It was one of Dimitri's first roofing process or roofing insights videos that he did. Uh, and then John Dye's most uh, most viewed video and the very first video that he ever went viral on was with those steep shorts um, and uh, the American Contractor Show, excuse me. But I think uh, it was one of my guys was actually in that video. That's yeah. one of the fun. I think it was one of my guys that was in the steep shorts video that John Dye did. That's funny. Right. You yeah, yeah. That. In that video right now has 17 million views. Uh, but but let's talk about the anatomy of of that 
that video or, or what that did, uh, not just for me, but that sold a whole small business out of their own product. Uh, and it was a, a 30 second video that we did at something that we normally would do anyways is, is take a video of us testing a product. Uh, and, and literally I had Matt Radford hold the camera up for me and just point the video and shoot. And then I, I did a couple of edits. I literally went over and sat in a corner um, at, at RoofCon. I had to find a spot that <laughs> people weren't yelling my name. Um, and, uh, I sat down with my back to people and I edited that video and I sent it off. And, uh, when I sent it to the algorithm that day, I didn't know what it was going to do. And I know exactly what happened to drive that video viral. Uh, 45 minutes after we, I posted that video, I went on Ty backers, uh, behind the tool belt. And when I sat my, I sat my camera down and I turned on TikTok live. And when I turned on TikTok Live, that video went to the moon. And I had almost a million views in the first 24 hours. And that's not typical of a video on TikTok. And within the first two days, it had four and a half million. And here we are three weeks later at 13 and almost 13 and a half million. So, yeah. That's pretty awesome, you know? And it's crazy, like I said, when you think about that, I've been doing roofing for over 20 yeah. years now. Yeah. And I started and it's again, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago when it was like, you know, we couldn't even use GPSs because my my boss didn't believe that they were accurate. You know, it was going to like take me yeah. the wrong way down the highway or, you know, it was going to do something to someone's going to get killed because of this chaos that we've got. Yeah. And everything was handwritten. Everything was by. Yeah. And now we're making viral videos where millions of people are watching it and you know stuff like this it's a, this is unbelievable to me this podcast yeah. but it's really fun to watch too because like i said i do have an association with a social media branding company in our organization yeah. and leanne koppel she's finally getting her TikTok yeah. stuff you know for a long time she was focused on doing all the the company brandings and all that yeah. that she does for her own business but then she was like you know what i'm gonna make this viral and the thing that's cool is i mean her videos are like she was dressed up as a cow in a cow outfit and she was reading a story to their pet cow in their living room. And it's like, what does you know, that have that, to do with anything? But those are the funny popular videos that make you smile. And it, it makes that, you, uh, it makes you an individual in this world for sure, man. I, I, I love those cow videos. I, I started watching, I saw uh, Leanne's videos pop up on my TikTok the other day. And uh, a lot of people don't know this Chuck, but I don't like other people's videos. Um, and the reason that I don't like other people's videos is so that I'm constantly fed new content and I don't hold the algorithm up from what it thinks it, it should show me. And Leanne's video popping up on my for you page was pretty cool. <laughs> I like, yeah, she's yeah. definitely diligent and, and knows what she's doing and it's cool. We yeah. branded our entire Rio Blanco company through social media. Honestly, yeah. I mean, I told the story many times, but we bought this, it was out of business and I'd never even been to San Antonio. So yeah. what do you do? You know, I had nobody to pull from. I had no friends, no family, nothing. And I had a company that was literally out of business. So we went oh. to the social media and she started her company about the same time. So yeah, I've got to, I've got to be the benefactor of the growth as we've gone, you know, the past three and a half years. And it's been awesome because I've got to do some crazy stuff, you know, and you're right. It, it makes you an individual. And yeah. when I have people that tell me, you know, I like the one where you and Eric were dressed up as Mario and Luigi and you're fighting with lightsabers <laughs> or when you were dressed as the Turkey at Thanksgiving and you got shot and they ate you for dinner, you know, yeah. all those videos that we've done. And it's just, it's a lot of fun. It shows who we are. And I tell people, you know what? Roofing is roofing. You've been doing this a long time. Tell me yeah. the difference from one roof to the other. There's not, yeah. you know, I mean, there's going to be shingles. There's going to be underlayment nails, six, seven things. So what's going to, what's going to differentiate you from everybody else is your character and your personality and not being afraid to look like an idiot. I mean, I've, I've crapped the bed on several videos over the course of my, my career, but the simple fact is those are the ones that people seem to like the most too, you know, cause you're a human being. And it's like, you know, I remember one time I was getting chased by a dog. I got locked in the back of a, a house one time for like six hours and nobody could come get me. I documented the whole thing on camera and, you know, 
stuff like that is kind of cool. Um, it's a story it, and people love stories. That's it. It's got nothing to do with roofs because like I right. said, everybody can do roofing and it's, it's yeah. cool. But so you're, you're with roofer now and you're the yeah. community leader, like yeah. the, uh, the, 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 I'm guessing, you know, kind of like the face of the, the program, right? Uh, you know, yeah, there, there's several of us. Yes. Um, but, but my particular position is to, you know, I, I have a particular role, uh, in, in, uh, in strategy and on how I'm, I'm going to be helping roofer and, uh, and yeah, it, it involves me being in front of roofers as often as possible. Um, we're starting here in North America, uh, with Canada, North America, and then down into, you know, South America. Uh, but this year we're looking forward to expanding into, uh, other continents, uh, and other territories in the world, um, where I'll be traveling to places, uh, such as Australia, possibly New Zealand. We're looking, uh, I'm looking at South Africa right now for some, for some traction. Uh, and truly, uh, when I was developing world's greatest roofer as a brand, um, I, I have a mission or a goal to, to what I, I foresaw, uh, uh, world's greatest roofer to be. But when Richie came to me and he's like, Hey, you know, I, I want to build this position inside of our company. I think you'd be great for this position and you have the ability of traveling to pretty much wherever you want, uh, to be in front of roofers and, and build community. And, uh, this, 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 uh, you know, this industry has had so much problems with people working against each other for so long that when I saw the opportunity to be with Roofer, which was already a great organization to begin with, uh, and then me bringing my brand uh, to be able to create great content and then also bring the community together even further, uh, I jumped on that. And, uh, and I've promised uh, quite a few years to Richie uh, and this team uh, to make sure that, uh, that we are successful. And that doesn't just take me, it's going to take everybody that comes to join our team, uh, and then putting the same love that everybody that works here, uh, uh, that, that they do every day. I love it, man. That is, yeah. that is amazing. Um, yeah. it brings up a question. I asked yeah. this to a lot of my guests that I have on that go and, you yeah. know, do a lot of events and stuff. Sure. I know you've got a baby girl, you've got a daughter. <laughs> Um, yeah. you've got a family life, you've got a personal life. Yeah. How much of that is affected by your travel and how much travel do you foresee yourself doing over the course of any given month or year? Yeah. How, you know, that's uh, gotta yeah. be tough obviously, but like, you know, to what extent are you sacrificing your personal, your, your life, honestly, for the industry, if you don't mind me asking that. Yeah, no, it's a, that's a, that's a real question. That's a, a question uh, that I that I deal with on a daily basis. Um, uh, when when I became famous on social, Karina and I had been apart. Right, we we broke up several times throughout our relationship, just like most people do. Um, you know, we've been together almost four years now, uh, but it was through trial and error. And uh, when when we were broke up is when I became social media famous. And so when we got back together, we had a whole different dynamic of how we had to learn how to deal with each other as a family because at that time we had two seven-year-old boys um and uh, and then i also have an older boy as well but um the uh the two seven-year-olds were very volatile at that time uh she had just gotten full custody uh as well as me i had recently had just gotten full custody from colorado courts with my son and so we were going through quite a bit of of, of personal turmoil in our life. Uh, but um, when uh, Jen Silver and I met this past year um, in January, she says, TJ, you know, I want to I want to build an organization that goes and not goes out and, and trains roofers. Would you would you help me? And uh, and I said, of course, uh, I would love to do that. And uh, we had some pretty big ambitions uh for how many cities that we were going to do uh at the very beginning we were going to do 33 and so I'm, I'm talking with karina about it and uh and she says okay as long as you promise that we're going to be okay you're going to make enough money to do this uh please go but don't be gone more than four days at a time uh so now yes uh fast forward to today uh sophia is almost eight months old or she's eight months old now and um 
she's growing and so the boys are you know almost nine now and um they they've gotten themselves into so many activities that me being gone a couple of days a week doesn't affect their schedule that much uh but also uh knowing that i'm getting to do what i what i love and that's helping other people uh that helps karina out as well and she takes care of home very well so uh it's been it's been easy uh to go try to to go travel a lot now this next year we have different plans on how we're going to travel together um, hopefully next summer we'll be able to travel all summer together as a family. Um, but, uh, but for right now, I'm going to have to travel at probably at least 75 times next year. So, uh, which for me, this is my prime, if you will, in my career. And, uh, this is the opportunity that I have to now in four years, retire and, and walk away if I want to, um, and, and leave a legacy of, of helping a lot of roofers uh, along the way. I so, love it. And yeah, yeah, and that's that's perfect. You're already looking at your escape and you're saying, yeah. okay, my daughter's going to be in kindergarten when I can be done yeah. with this all together. So the sacrifice yeah. is definitely worth it. 75 trips a year, man. I think yeah. last year I did about 30 or 32. Yeah. And that was insane to me. And yeah. it's like, I'll never, I'll never do that again, but right. I guess you kind of get used to it after a while. Um, as best you can, at least, right? In the, in the very beginning, uh, when I was doing the one industry with Jen and Tim um, this year, uh, it was very hard around the sixth or seventh trip of doing two day events. Uh, and it takes a lot of uh, a lot of toll on you as a person, physically, mentally, to travel it often. As you know, uh, you're traveling 30 times last year, you don't get to sleep in the same bed. You don't get to sleep. It's not the same temperature in your room. It's not the same smell. Uh, everything is different. Um, and then all of the different, sometimes you don't even know what city you're in, <laughs> but, uh, it's real. yeah, but, uh, but no, I, I've just learned to, you know, know that, okay, I've got until Thursday I got, and then I'll be home. And, and then I know that I'll be, I got three days and then I, I get to go back and do it again. But it's those living for those three days that when you get to go home, uh it, that you look forward to while you're out on the road that uh, as long as you don't give up looking forward to those times then you're going to be all right yep there's a lot of beauty to that too and it, right. it definitely makes your time that much more special so i appreciate that um yeah. you talked about the one industry one model tour yeah i did have jen on here right before it was ready yeah. to kick off right yeah. and we talked about the reasoning why she was doing it yeah, she explained her model. It made perfect sense to me. And obviously it doesn't work for everybody right. and everybody's got polarizing, uh, you know, right. ideas about everything. But I, I had uh, Mike Stearns on here a couple of days ago as well. And he was at one of the events and he's, he said it was awesome. He enjoyed it. Yeah. You were at pretty much every one of them, right? Were there 11 events that she did? Uh, well, so I, I'm part owner of one industry as well. Um, nice. I yeah, did not but, know that. Yeah. So Jen and I own that together. Um, that's a lot of people don't know that, <laughs> but now uh, but, we do. Yeah. But, uh, no, I've been at all of, as a matter of fact, you see one industry right here. Um, but, uh, but no, uh, we, we were starting off, we were going to do 33, me, Jen, John Sinek, and then also Matt Maholan. And, uh, you know, we, we had some, some contract negotiations we were working on with, uh, with a major organization in the roofing space that didn't go through. And then John and Matt decided that they wanted to go do the discontinued shingle and NCI, which just left Jen and I. And then also we, we brought along Tim uh, to, to assist us with like the marketing and also the building of the program. Uh, but, you know, when we when we did those, well, we've only done nine so far. We have one more in Salt Lake City. Um, it's it's been uh, it's been a time like but it's it's great to have as many big names as we've had uh, to join the journey along the way, you know, the Hunter Baloo's, the Adam Sands, uh, you know, uh, Mike Claudio's, uh, all of those people getting to see each of them speak more than once is, is, a, is a treat in itself. Yeah, no doubt. And I didn't know that you had that level of involvement with it. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Okay. When Jen was explaining her reasoning behind it, it made sense. Her business yeah. model being her you know, her life situation, what it is and, and the needs yeah. that she had specifically. So what drew you into that model and, and led yeah. you to think, Hey, this is a revolution that we could take part in and 
I'm going to dedicate my time, my money and my energy into help and yeah. promote this as well. Yeah. What did you see that, that led you to think, Hey, let's do this. So, um, the opportunity to help a lot of roofers educationally, uh, was the biggest thing for me, uh, because, you know, we, we don't have enough education out there as it is. And then sometimes people rub each other the wrong way. Um, but, uh, but no, I, I didn't foresee it as a, a one way street with the one industry, one model, because I'm a storm chaser for life. Uh, I will always love the sound of that hail noise going off on my phone every time it bings. Um, <laughs> and I'll get excited every time they tell me there's a hurricane coming. Uh, but at the same time, I'll wait on the outside of that neighborhood and wait for that storm to finish too, uh, with everybody else that's getting ready to go door knocking. Uh, but the, the model, uh, you know, of uh, making sure that we're training homeowners uh, to understand the process and then also for them to get to, to deal with that process. It, it helps us out when we're, we're going back later and we're like, you know, look, you just had to deal with all the same things that we typically had to deal with. And they're, they're blaming us as the people with uh, at fault, you know, and, uh, but, but getting to, to teach that, that lump sum model um, is definitely uh, something that I, I've enjoyed learning, especially from the retail side, because being a storm chasing roofer, uh, I didn't know a whole lot about the retail side. And I've learned everything down to the, the last penny uh, this year, uh, working on the finance side of, uh, of this, and then also learning how much finance is involved in, in the roofing space. It's amazing how so many successful people never quite grasp those, those concepts and understand how those numbers work. But to me, it, it's amazing. And I, you know, I think that what you guys did for the industry was great because yeah. that's taking the initiative. It's going out and trying to improve a whole bunch of different people's lives and doing it for, you know, I mean, that, that came out of your pocket. I'm sure there was a ton of sleepless yeah. nights involved and a ton of yeah. planning and work and, and coordination that goes into it. So thank you for doing it because yeah. I mean, if it helps one person, I'm sure in your mind, it's worth all that. And uh, I'm yeah. sure it's going to help way more than one. But when you were doing that, did you happen to see, you know, what kind of diversity as far as sizes of companies, yeah. types of businesses, you know, a lot of family owned companies, a lot of corporate what, uh, you know, what was the main demographic that seemed to be showing up at the events that you guys seem to be working with the most? You know, it, it would be even, it would be less than million dollar companies all the way up to, you know, I mean, Ty, Ty Backer was a part of our, our, our event. I don't want to lie to say how much Ty makes, uh, but he, he's not a, he's not a slouch in the Northeast there. Um, he had a very awesome <laughs> set for his podcast. I know that much. Yeah. That's what I'm aspiring to. So but, but, that's know, pretty Ty, good. But Ty's the, the kind of roofer that will, will dabble in a little storm, but also owns the bank and, uh, and can do the, the entire ground up build of new build construction and make money on it where a lot of roofers can't even make uh, dollars on a new build. Um, and, uh, but, but no, going back, uh, yeah, we had, uh, everywhere from zero, zero millions to, you know, 30, 40 million. Um, and then also we had companies that were in the process of scaling from 10 to 20 million, uh, or even 20 to 30 million. So there were, there were a lot of big names in there. You know, we had the Dustin Beeglers come through. We had, um, you know, uh, uh Caleb Oberg, uh, a, a bunch of newer names but big faces that are coming out in this industry uh uh from developing a process that works great for their organization yep and just giving another yeah. another thought process behind how this business works and how it can work is yeah. is invaluable so yeah. i love that um we've been talking for a while now this has yeah. been absolutely amazing i have a couple more things i yeah, wanted to good. discuss real quick um but i don't want to take up too much of your day no. you are the world's greatest roofer in your <laughs> viral so you know, I'm sure you I, probably I, uh, got a lot going on. I've got um, nine, nine meetings today, but uh, I'm definitely okay for the next 20 minutes. So. All right. Well, we, we'll dedicate <laughs> the next 20 minutes in and we'll be done. So right. here's, uh, here's the next question I had. Um, I was, I was scrolling through my Facebook yesterday, I think. And I scrolled across a pretty impressive credential that showed up on yeah. my screen. Wow. And uh, it was tied directly to you. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this? Because I believe this is going to be, uh, you know, yeah. this is this is big time stuff. And how did this all come about for you? Because, again, yeah. 
It's so, probably going to be a pretty crazy little story, right? Yeah, well, I'll just start. Um, you know, uh, a week before, uh, uh, well, the, the end of September, um, we saw that blip show up on the weather map of a hurricane down in the southern, uh, the southern Caribbean, and uh, it was looking, it was looking pretty fine, right? It was, it was doing well. It was rotating well. The pressure was dropping like it was supposed to. And uh, I said, there, here's my opportunity uh, to go and, and be in this hurricane. Um, a couple of weeks before that, the hurricane had hit uh, Puerto Rico. And I was sitting on the plane ready to take off when the, when the plane got canceled uh, going to Puerto Rico. So I couldn't be in the hurricane that hit Puerto Rico. But fast forward a couple of weeks later, uh, the perfect storm happened. And so I, I called Matt Mulholland up and I said, Matt, here's our opportunity. You know, last year we tried to ride ride together with Hail Trace and and uh, and those guys over at C3, and we didn't have an opportunity to get in the in the truck with them. So this year, um, I said I have the capability of reaching uh, a lot of people, and I can do it on live broadcast. And uh, and so Matt was kind of skeptical. Everybody around me was kind of skeptical. I started gathering some sponsors that were like. You know, we, we don't really think that you can reach the numbers that you think that you can reach. And um, let's let's talk a little bit about why I, what my, in my own mentality. Um, I've been hearing a lot of psychological questions or, or things being asked of the news media, particularly um, because of uh, of the way that things have happened or transitioned over the past few years with the news taking on a fully political um way about them right everything is political you either left or right or or you're wrong or you're right or it, it doesn't matter so social media live broadcasting uh since i've started doing tiktok has taken on a whole new meaning to how we're showing people what's going on currently in the world uh with just our phone um and uh in pointing what i call point of view style of video footage or content creation where I can show you exactly what's going on right now and there's no lies being told to you uh, or you're being led to believe something that's not really happening. Um, and, uh, and when I saw this opportunity, I knew that no news organization was gonna go into that hurricane and they were gonna show us live from inside that hurricane. And so that morning when we started out, um, I, uh, I started live broadcasting. Um, and I posted my first video on TikTok, and within three hours, it was at 1.5 million views, and I had just under 200,000 people watch me. And uh, and by the end of the day, when we lost our service at, at three o'clock on the dot that afternoon, uh, when it was a Category Four sitting on top of us in Port Charlotte, uh, my feed cut, and I was at 1.1 million people watching, and that alone. Uh, beat CNN, Fox News, and the Weather Channel combined for numbers of viewers that day watching a hurricane on live video. Um, now, fast forward to what you're talking about. Uh, yesterday, um, I received uh, my press pass uh, for to be a journalist in the United States in, as well as internationally. Uh, so I'll be able to uh, go and into harm's way again uh to to broadcast as a journalist now i'll actually have that designation um and i have the credentials now to uh to get to get past enemy lines if i need to a little bit um but uh but more so uh, i i hope to utilize that as a way of showing people that uh it, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to come from other people um, to persuade you of how it really is. And we can all help one another by truly showing up for one another by providing a uh, live living proof as to what's really going on in any, any, any circumstance. Um, NBC news did an article about me, uh, in particularly, uh, as the news organizations or reporters are scared of people like myself, uh, because it will take over and they will they'll lose their jobs and in news organizations as we know it will go away okay so let's talk about that for a yeah. second because that was my exact thought was you know yeah. being out there and showing the truth doesn't yeah. really help anybody that's trying to you know further any type of narrative so yeah. 
have you had any pushback? Have you had, you know, any type yeah. of, of communication saying, Hey bro, calm down a little bit. We're not trying to really go out there and, uh, spread the truth as much as you are here. You're, yeah. uh, you're messing with our program. So, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, CNN's Bill Weir, um, he, <laughs> uh, he was very, um, upset with me. Um, when I, uh, I met with him, uh, in Fort Myers, uh, right after they opened the roads to get into Fort Myers. Uh, and you can see all the devastation. We're standing next to freaking boats on the on land, and uh, and he's like, "Yeah, you know uh, what you did wasn't honorable because you could have gotten killed." And I said, "No, what I did was honorable because it showed everybody what was really happening, and there's no ability for somebody to go back and say no, that didn't really happen." Um, so uh, he he just looked at me and walked away. Uh, but. Uh, but the other feedback that I've gotten is from producers of major movies and, and broadcast or as well as television shows on uh, platforms such as Apple TV, uh, Roku uh, uh, and those types of devices where they want to do live documentary broadcast moving forward where we do a pre storm, a during storm, a post storm. And that's what next year we'll be concentrating on. Every time there's a hurricane, I'll be with the XTR television channel doing live documentaries. And that is that is incredible. I mean, yeah. this this entire story from 2015 to today is <laughs> yeah. like you, you're going to have a movie someday, I'm sure. But <laughs> I got to get set up. I got to get a book first, like Hunter. Well, hey, dude, there's a lot of people writing books. I'll tell you, Jim Johnson was on yeah. my show the other day, and I just uh, I haven't read his yet, but he's got a great book out as well. Yeah, I can barely read, so I don't know about writing, but uh, yeah, I, this, I can't either. I mean, I misspelled. Right, <laughs> I didn't even know that was the, you know a thing until someone pointed it out to me. But yeah. what an absolutely mm -hmm. amazing story! And you're yeah. just getting started. I can certainly yeah. believe that. Um, at the end of the day, you know, you're, you, you've already kind of given a timeline on, you know, here's yeah. what I could do. Right. Realistically, guys like us, we don't retire at a young age and then just ride off into the sunset. So realistically speaking, where do you see TJ, you know, 10 years from now, are you going to be, you know, the most yeah. famous dude in the world that, that goes out and, and spreads the truth or, yeah. Are you going to, you're going to get sick of this crap and then say, you know what, I'm going to live in the woods somewhere <laughs> and I got my fame. I got my, my 200 plus million views and I'm out. What, yeah. uh, what's your ultimate plan for this? Cause it's probably nothing like what you started off planning to begin with anyway. You know, I, I planned on making it paycheck to paycheck there a few years ago. Um, it does, that's just being honest. Uh, and uh, you know, nowadays I, I, I'm looking forward to, to buying a new house, uh, to, to making sure that my kids' lives are better than what they have been the, the first part of their lives, um, and, uh, and making sure that uh, that I keep an, an industry or, or leave an industry better than the way that we left that the way that it was when I came into this industry. And I don't mean that you know. It, here's what I mean by that, because a lot of times people hear me say this industry sucks, or, or is, you know, there are some bad actors in this industry. There are some bad it actors. It does suck. <laughs> it's, it, you don't. Not a lot of people can get up at five in the morning forcefully and then stay at work until past dark every day, um, especially in the middle of summer. Uh, but uh, but no, I I uh, I hope that. Uh, we can move past uh, an industry that has a black eye around every corner, um, especially whether it be in the news or social media or, uh, you know, something legally happening to a roofer or to the roofing industry uh, because of a bad actor. Um, we need to make sure that we're very responsible with our content that we are putting out as to make sure that people uh, don't think or, or view us in a different light. Uh, other than trying to be helpful or doing the right thing uh, or just building great roofs and, and not overcharging people or, or not stealing from them or falling off the roof because we're drugged or drunk. Um, and uh, and we, we have a, a, a responsibility to the next generation of guys and girls coming up uh, to uh, for them to have a better life and an easier sell because people don't think that they're going to steal from them. So, there you go. There's no more, more noble reason. And it's crazy. The more people I talk to, the more I realize there are a lot of us that feel the same exact yeah. way and we're doing it for the same reason. So yeah. it gives me hope in our industry, which 
Yeah. There are times when I have no hope for this industry, but I've got a lot of it right now because there are so many great people doing amazing things out there. And I can't thank you enough for the time you took today. Sure. Uh, we'll, we'll close it down here a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to make this into two episodes because Nick sure. was right at three minutes. Yeah. And then yours is going to be close to an hour. So I'll cut this into two. Yep. Um, yeah, part one and part two. There you go. It'll be perfect. <laughs> so anybody that's watching Keeping It Real right now yeah. or listening down the road, Let's, I think everybody on the face of the earth already knows how to follow you on social media and all that. But if there's one or two people left that haven't, there's, yeah, go there's, ahead. There's something that people just don't know just yet about what I'm going to be doing this next year. Um, we're, we're, we're attending all of the normal events. We'll be at, a, uh, it will even be at some events that maybe you don't even know about. Um, but I'm going to be working with my team over the next several weeks to develop a road show. And uh, we're going to be going on tour uh, all over the country next year. At least 10 spots is what, I, what I've got right this moment. So for anywhere from New York City to Boston to Atlanta to places that typically we don't see a roofing event go. And uh, I, I want to go places that are cool for people to come and visit if they want to come to a place like New York City and, and do an event on top of a skyscraper. Um, and, uh, I want to think outside the box, uh, to help our, 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 our industry grow. Uh, but, uh, but look forward to, to hearing more about that over the next few months. Um, and, uh, and, and I know for a fact, we're going to do three in California. Um, and then even I was going to talk to you, Chuck, February the 3rd, we're going to do it in Houston. Nice. Yeah, I know so, uh, I've got an event in February that we're doing in East Texas. I don't know the exact dates, but I will yeah. be at the one in Houston for sure. If that's not something that's in my yeah, deal, we're, we're going to February 3rd. Uh, absolutely. I would love to be in the yeah. attendance for that because, you know, yeah, you can't you can't learn enough in this industry. You can't make enough great connections. And we're yeah, for that, sure. Uh, Green Klein Wood Laws uh, Mansion in downtown Houston. So like, like those types of things like roofers might not ever roofing salespeople may never ever step foot into a mansion in their life and uh for them to get to go into a mansion to learn something to experience something new those are the types of events that i want to put on to leave a lasting memory that uh, maybe they learned something as well as had a great time yep create an experience i love yeah. that I've, I've been to some really cool events this year that were experiences in themselves yeah. and that's what this life is all about so yeah. Let's wind it down yeah. here. Um, anybody wants to get a hold of the greatest yeah. roofer in the world, um, how do the yeah. Keeping It Rio fans follow you? Where do they yeah. find you? I mean, pretty much at this point, it's like open yeah. your eyes and you're going to see this, man. But if yeah. anybody is living under a rock, how are they going to go about getting uh, in contact with the world's greatest roofer? Or... Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll tell you two ways. Uh, easy way, tj at roofer.com, R-O-O-F-R.com. Uh, but uh, if you if here comes my vanity, if you want to find me, search who is the world's greatest roofer and my phone number will pop up immediately. Uh, so uh, <laughs> right. the, the ultimate flex was uh, the SEO that I got from world's greatest roofer. Um, and uh, anybody in the world can search who is the world's greatest roofer and I, and I show up. And I definitely did my due diligence of making sure that I could sell more and make it a, a living for myself minus COVID. So, <laughs> yeah, you've, you've yeah. definitely done something amazing. And uh, it, this has been an incredible hour and a half. I appreciate yeah. your time so much. We got to do this again sometime Thank because you. there's a lot more to talk about. But uh, yeah. TJ, thank you for what you're doing for the industry. Appreciate just it. for being you man your story was amazing and i was not Thank expecting you. you know the story that you told so that's pretty awesome um i'm gonna end the recording now thank you to everybody yeah. for watching episode 97 if you liked it give us a review share it with your friends do anything you can to help us because we want to continue to grow this brand of keeping it rio and the value that my guests bring i want to provide to as many people as possible so thank you guys until next time this has been episode 97 of Keeping It Rio. We'll see you guys soon. All right. Awesome, man.